Yes. Today we're talking about raw feeding. What is raw feeding? Raw feeding is a way of feeding your dog without using kibble. The best way to do this is by feeding actual raw meat, bones, and organs. There's no cooking e even involved. There are three different kinds of raw feeding. The first is prey model raw. This has a ratio of 80% meat, 10% bone, 5% liver, and 5% other organ. This will be talked about again at a later date or a later time. There are two different ways to feed prey model raw. These are frank and prey, right here and right here, which is where you take pieces of the like different protein sources that you find and put them together to actually make like a you know Frankenstein version of an actual bird or prey animal. And then prey whole prey feeding is another way to do it where you actually take a prey animal and feed them to your dog and it actually has a natural ratio that you were looking for um, to make it complete. Another way to do it is doing biologically appropriate raw food, or BARF we call it, and this has 70% meat, 10% bone, 10% vegetable matter, 5% liver, and 5% other organ. <clears throat> if you don't have the time or money or don't want to mess with all the raw feeding, you can, there are different ways that you can feed raw food to get the same benefits, and that's dehydrated and freeze-dried. These use slight um, cooking methods to make it more edible and less um, worried about salmonella or other kinds of bacteria. Or there's also pre-made raw, which is still raw food, but they have sort of grinds that they already have the whole ratio in there, and then you can just thaw it out and give it to your dogs later. Some of you must be thinking that this is a lot of work compared to kibble, so why feed raw instead of kibble? So there are many benefits to feeding raw, and a couple of these are white teeth and fresh breath, better coat conditions, smaller waist and um, less smellier waist, a stronger immune system, a better stabilized energy level, ideal weight maintenance, and then once you start feeding raw, um, a lot of owners have noticed that their dogs um, go through a sort of detox in the first couple of weeks. This can include um, increased shedding of the dead hair. Their ears and eyes can be a little gunky and smelly, as well as their breath. And this is just their body getting rid of the toxins that have accumulated over time from eating kibble, that, like and all those stuff that they don't need from it. Um, so whole prey PMR, this is where I'm breaking down that ratio. So 80% is going to be your meat. And over here is an example of the kinds of meats that you can use. So um, you can use muscle, fat, heart, um, gizzards, lung, and tongue, uterus, pizzle, green tribe, trachea, gullets, and tendons. So there's a lot of different kinds that you can use. Heart and fat are really uh, rich, and so you use less amounts of those just because it can cause upset stomachs. And heart is really rich in nutrients that you don't need um, overly amounts of. Um, you can use 10% bone, I don't have a picture up here, but 10% bone can be like duck heads, feet, um, as long as they're not weight bearing bones, you can really feed any kind of bones as long as they're edible and not cooked. 5% uh, liver, liver is where you get um, the nutrients instead of feeding vegetables, but we talk about that in another slide as well. And then as well as liver, you always have to feed liver, but as on top of liver you have to feed another secreting organ, and that can include kidneys, spleen, pancreas, brain, thymus, testicles, and ovaries. Um, they also have sweet breads, which is the cul culinary name for the thymus of the pancreas. Um, these can be found at Asian markets, butcher shops, sometimes you can even find it at your basic grocery stores like Save Lots, Kroger, that kind of thing. Um, in order to find out how much food you should be feeding, you look at your dog's body weight. And most dogs feed right between the 2 and 3% body weight. So. Um, that's your ideal maintenance weight. If your dog needs to lose a couple pounds, you go towards closer to the 2% body weight, and then if they need to gain a couple pounds, you go closer to the 3 or 3.5%. Every dog has different metabolisms, so you kind of just have to see how your dog does on one, and if it's not right, you can switch it up, increase or decrease as needed. Um, Vegetables and fruits are not needed in the diet, but they are a good source of supplementation. Like I said in the last slide, um, you've, liver is so important because they have the breakdowns of all like, the different carbohydrates and vitamins like that. So if you want to supplement your dog, um, the good cruciferous vegetables to use are kale, spinach, collards, chard, argula, dandelion greens, tarnip greens, beetroot greens, cabbage. Uh, those kind of vegetables you should only try to do at most 7% of the diet, any more than that, and they won't be able to absorb it. 
Um, and then the kind of berries to use are blueberries, blackberries, goji berries, strawberries, raspberries, stuff like that. And those should be no more than 3%. In order to be the most biologically available for your dog, these need to be pureed or um, fermented because dogs don't, um, they have such a short digestive tract that they don't just break it down by themselves. So if you feed them a whole broccoli or a whole piece of kale or something, um, they might not be able to digest it as easy as if it was broken down and all of the nutrients released. Um, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage are speculated to cause hypothyroid hypothyroidism at high quantities, so be careful when using those. Only do a little bit at a time. And never use onions, raisins, grapes, or anything with seeds and pits. Um, those can be highly toxic to your dogs, depending on the breed and the body weight of the dog, and then garlic should only be used in very small amounts if you decide to do that. So this is a breakdown of my dog. I'm using the app Raw Fed Dog. Um, it's free on Google Play or, or you know Apple. Um, my dog is 40 pounds, um, and she eats 3% of her body weight because she we run a lot. She's very active, and she has a really high metabolism. Um, so this means that her 80% of the 3% of her body weight is going to be muscle. So she eats 15.36 ounces every day of muscle. She eats 1.92 ounces of bone every day, 0.96 ounces of liver, and 0.96 ounces of non-liver organs. So her total every day is to be fed 1 pound and 3.2 ounces. Um, some people don't feed bones and liver every single day or bones and organs. You can, as long as you have the proper amount um, over a course of a week, um, then your dog will still have the proper nutrients. You just don't want to overfeed or underfeed in a week of time. Um, so some things that you'll need in order to be a raw feeder. Um, you need a calculator in order to do all the math, you know, for all that stuff. And then you'll have, to have a sharp knife to cut the meat, cutting boards to cut it on, baggies and sharpies so you can separate and label, Tupperware to keep them in, in your freezer, and then you need a freezer. I bought a deep freezer specifically for this, and then you're going to need a lot of time. Um, normally it takes me about two weeks to do about, or it takes me about two hours to do about two weeks worth of food, um, and then I always have leftovers, so I keep them in my baggies, and it's already pretty much pre-packaged, so it, it takes less time the next times I do it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so this is what it looks like when I'm setting up my meat. I like to take it all out of the bags, and I do, um, we'll talk about this later, but multiple proteins in one of these separators. So I'll take a little bit of the grind, a little bit of the chicken, a little bit of the heart, and then I'll put it in there along with their bones. I don't have any bones in this picture. But um, this was actually my friend's version because she was nice and labeled for us. Um, she has walleye, duck breast, buffalo liver, sirloin, um, all that kind of stuff. Rabbit there are websites that you can go to to get the um, different cuts of meat if you don't find it in your like international markets or regular grocery stores. Um, so this is what my counter looks like. I have Tupper on the side so I can just throw it over there. I have a little scale so I can weigh it out, make sure I'm giving her the right amounts um, up here or like right here. Um, I feed her goat milk every day. It promotes prebiotic and uh, prebiotic um, and digestive health. And then I also do um, digestive enzymes. It helps break it down in her stomach if she needs a little extra help. Um, I use Firm Up. It has pumpkin and apple fiber, and as well as um, chia seeds. And if, so she, if she has an upset tummy one day, I'll give her a little bit of that. And plus, it's, she likes the way they taste. Um, and this is venison tripe. Um, I buy it in cans at my local pet store. Um, she really likes the taste of it, and she's a little picky, so I, if I put that on top of anything, she'll be more likely to eat it. <laughs> um, so that is my setup. And then this is what my ending will look like. So this is what about two weeks worth of food looks like. That's what an individual will look like. I have a little bit of um, a fish head on top um, that has good like omega threes and sixes. It's more supplementation than it is a muscle meat. Um, you can see like my liver, my organs. Um, I think this is a fattier muscle. It's a grind. I try not to do grinds as much. Now what is grind actually? Grind is like just ground down meat. Sometimes we'll have bone in there if you make it that way, but. Um, you don't get the chewing and scraping of the bone if you make it a grind, so I prefer not to no, do that. No, did you make the grinder or do you buy the grinder? I buy the grinder. Okay. I don't have a grinder, maybe okay. one day, maybe okay. for Christmas, who knows. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then this is another person, they have a whole um, rabbit ear. It's okay to feed a whole rabbit, some people do that. The, <laughs> the uh, fur acts as fiber, and um, since you feed raw feeding, um, your stomach acidity is really, um, it's designed to break down all those extra hairs and the eggshells 
and I think that's tribe as well right there. There's a trachea, so mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun stuff. And if you want to learn more about raw feeding, um, there's a calculator. This is the app I used. Um, there's a raw feeding Facebook group that I'm a part of. Anyone can join. And these are two really good websites to learn more before you actually start raw feeding on your own. Okay, I got a question. Yes. What um, prompted you to do raw feeding? What's the history behind this? Um, I used to work at, it's called Incredipet, it's in Kentucky, and um, one of my really good friends that worked there ran the wolf refuge in Kentucky, and so she was always raw feeding her wolves and her personal dogs, and I never did it when I was there, but when I moved back to Indiana, my, my personal dog, she hates kibble, like she will starve herself, like she's gone like two weeks. Now, what's that? Which Willow. Willow, okay. Mm -hmm. So she's super skinny all the time, but she will go like two weeks only eating like two cups of food. And she just did this the other day, even on Rob. She just, um, she likes the taste of Rob better, and it's more fun for them to eat. Mm -hmm. um, it's mentally stimulating to have oh, to yeah. chew up their food and gnaw on it a while, and it's more palatable mm -hmm. than just like dry, you know, kibble. Yeah. Um, plus all the extra fun stuff I put on top. So like even with raw, she'll go maybe like five days every once in a while, but it, she likes it a lot better. And I like all the benefits that it has. Mm -hmm. I supplement my puppy on raw, but he gets kibble just for the training aspect mm -hmm. of it. Now what do your friends think of you? I have, um, actually a lot of <laughs> Purdue people are not fans of raw because they think you know, you're killing your dog. A lot of vets actually um, are against raw because they are only um, they only have to go through like one nutrition class in vet school, and it's you know paid by kibble companies. So they don't learn about the benefits of raw. They're told that it's dangerous, and um, when in reality, it's like the opposite. I used to go to um, oh my gosh, my old vet. She was very holistic. That's the word. Um, and so she raw fed. She does the hypo you know, everything, and so she was the one who helped me get started, so it's rare to find a vet that doesn't yeah. yell at you for raw feeding, right. but it's good, it's good. Okay. <laughs>